Okay, hello YouTube. Welcome to my sewing room. Today we're going to do a different kind of video. I'm going to show you my attempts and process through making a belt for my Edwardian outfit. Editing Robin here. This video was actually filmed in August of 2019 and the event I was going to wear it to got cancelled and then I never got finished photos of it. So, well, enjoy it now. Uh, normally I would just draft this myself. It's a pretty simple thing, but this uh, truly Victorian pattern fell in my lap. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it because why reinvent the wheel if one has already been handed to you? The patterns come like this, all of the paper folded up, a lot of sheets for just belts. And then here are the instructions that true to form I probably won't follow, but you know, it's always nice to imagine. All right, so uh, step one is that I don't have anything to make this out of, so we're going to need to take a trip to Joanne's. So uh, buckle up and let's go head out. So this is my skirt fabric that I'm hoping to go find some kind of belt contrast fabric -y something for. Boring. It's too dark. Blue doesn't seem terrible. Gray is an option, although also very boring. Electric teal would be a statement. Gotta rule out yellow and red. Pink is a possibility, but would make me feel a little matchy matchy. Taupe is hella boring. White's not flattering. Okay, so I'm back from the fabric store and I thought it might be fun to do a little bit of a haul of the things that I got. This really cute um, corduroy, how do I unfold this? Corduroy, that I intend to make matching jumpers for my two nieces who are seven and five. Uh, this was on the remnant or the clearance table, so it was really cheap, but I thought it would make a cute little autumn jumper. I got this really fun llama print to make myself a skirt because it made me really happy. That'd be cute. I got a few Halloween prints because making bandanas for my dog has become a little bit of my new weakness. These three are going to become bandanas for Ellie. Then I got some tassels because I always seem to need them for reticules and stuff. And they're a little bit vibrant in color, but for six for a dollar fifty, I couldn't say no. So they might go on a reticule someday. For now, they're gonna go just into the stash for the day when I need them. I got a remnant of 100% cotton. This is actually supposed to be cool, uh, curtain lining, but uh, it will work fine for the lining of my belt, the actual point of this video. I picked out, so this was my swatch of my skirt fabric, and the uh, blouse is just white, the shirt waist is white, so I only brought this one. And I'm going to make it out of this matte satin um, casa, it's actually called blackberry, I was calling it eggplant, but it's actually, they call it blackberry, um, 
Yes, it's evil polyester. Yes, silk would be nicer. But I need it in a couple days and Joann's doesn't sell silk anymore. Everybody writes to them and tell them they need to sell silk at reasonable prices. So good enough for now. And then I bought some drill to be the heavy interfacing of it because something with this long point, I don't want it to like crunch down. So that's all the goodies I got at Joann's. Be proud of me that I didn't spend more money. So I started to trace the wrong um, view because it's view B in little letters, but A, round belt fabric in giant letters, so I misread it. Oops. So I'm tracing the pattern out actually onto parchment paper because I was out of my grid tracing paper and I stole this from the kitchen. Waste not, want not. So the interlining piece is actually a different piece. It's not cut on the fold like the fashion fabric is so that when you overlap them, you have a double thickness at the center front, which just provides some more stability so that the point doesn't crunch down. So here I am cutting out the drill interlining, which is nice and heavy. And the 100% cotton for the lining. Please admire the fact that I don't iron anything. Also, this is kind of wasteful pattern. I'm just saying you waste a lot of fabric when you cut things correctly. So here you can see I'm overlapping those front points to create the double thickness that keeps it from squishing down. So step one is to lay the interlining over the fashion fabric and fold around those raw edges to the inside, being careful to try to keep the corners tidy. Then you lay the lining piece over the wrong side and fold in its seam allowances so that you have both seam allowances folded in so that when you hand sew them together you've carefully encased all of your raw edges. I suppose you could do the fashion fabric first and whip stitch it down and then add the lining over it but it's just kind of unnecessary work to do it twice. If you weren't worried about historical accuracy you could also probably um, bag line this and turn it. But personally, I enjoy hand sewing, so I did this the accurate way. Notice that I didn't iron my fabric. Okay, so here's a bit of a close-up. I have the interlining in the middle, and then I have the satin folded around, and then the lining pinned with this uh, seam allowance underneath on top. I tried to keep my corners fairly crisp, but I'm less worried about the ones in the back. This is the point that like really matters because you'll see it center front. Um, the really annoying part about working with polyester satin as opposed to a true silk is that this doesn't hold a pleat, a turn, an edge at all. It has a mind of its own where it wants to boing back and be flat. So this is one of those instances where yes, I used the cheap polyester because it was available, it was affordable, I could get it at Joann's without having to wait for shipping, but really the quality of my product suffers because of it. So if I had the option or I had a scrap of silk that worked and was the correct color, it would be miles away better to do it this way. And I probably will remake one for this outfit later at a later date. Uh, maybe I'll try the round style or the crossover, but make it with actual silk because this outfit's gonna get a lot of wear in the coming year and I may as well mix it up with a few accessories. So the next step is we're going to carefully and slowly hand sew all the way around the edges. So there's nothing fancy here. I'm just doing a whip stitch, but the key is to be careful to not go all the way through and catch um, the outside of the satin. 
Okay, maybe it's not a whip stitch. I don't actually know the names of all the fancy hand sewing stitches. And here's the less glamorous part of hand sewing. I always catch my pins. Okay, so I sewed some hooks and eyes. Uh, I ended up using four, because these are kind of small, on each side of the center back. Uh, this pattern apparently is designed to just meet exactly so it can have kind of a point. Um, we'll see how that fits. We're going to live dangerously. Uh, and that's the front. And it just needs a good pressing and it's done. So because my event was canceled, I didn't actually put this on from August until last month. But look, I wore it when I made my one day shirt waist. So proof that I did in fact finish it and it actually closes. Ta-da! It's an, a nice pattern. I mean, if you're capable of drafting, you don't really need this yourself. It's pretty easy to figure out. But if you have it, it works nicely. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Hopefully, I'll have more substantial things than a silly belt in the future. And I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. 2020 sure has been a doozy. Thanks for watching. Bye.